In its own words, Andromeda is a wild horse hybrid simulation slash role-playing game. This browser-based equine world had nine Indiegogo backers and is still active four years after my initial video review. Today, I want to get into the brass tacks of what this game is, my reaction to it, the content of my previous video, and some slice of life gameplay. Let's get into Indomita. The Indomita team had an Indiegogo that raised 6% of its overall flexible goal, meaning that even though they didn't raise the goal amount, they still received the funds raised. Indiegogo doesn't preserve the year dates on closed campaigns, but using other posts on different sites, I'm making the informed guess that the crowdfunding was in 2014. In July of 2014, an Indomita post popped up on the Flight Rising forums with the information that limited registration would open on Friday, August 8th, 2014. For reference, Flight Rising opened in 2013, one year ahead of Indomita. The statistics box on the Andromeda homepage boasts over 5,000 active characters, 174 active users. Active users are different from the amount of users online, which can be monitored on the sidebar under the navigation table. Andromeda is a horse simulator, not a pet ownership and management game. In a pet ownership game like Neopets.com, the player is not a character. Instead, the user manages the pets, much like objects in an inventory. In a simulator, the user takes the perspective of one of the pets. In Indomita, the player toggles which horse they're playing as a core feature of gameplay. As the site's introduction states, simulation is only half the hybrid makeup of this game. The other dimension to Indomita is role-playing. There are multiple models of role-playing available on Indomita, both by text-based interaction and game feature-facilitated interactions. This browser interface is set to control one character at a time. In order to change between horses, the user selects switch character and selects the character. The icon on the right sidebar updates to reflect the active character, accompanied by stats including their action points, health, mood, and level. Most of the simulation functionality comes to light on the location page where there is a grid of gameplay features to choose from. When a user selects general, they're brought to a console with a strip of options their horse can do in exchange for action points. Interactions and quests taken from this console can result in the user getting items or skill points that may ultimately lead to the horse leveling up. Indomita fosters space for player interaction in various form settings and through game features. Users can simulate relationships in the general location console and build familiarity with horses related to their characters or found through searching capabilities. There are multiple sorts of factions, which are groups horses can join. The different sorts of factions serve their own specific role-playing needs. The example I have experience with is the herd type of faction. In a herd, there is a herd page, hierarchy of characters, forum, and inventory. Species-specific animal simulators like Leiden or Andromeda rely on the user coming to the game with some understanding of that species. For instance, on Leiden, lions assemble in prides, and there can only be one alpha lion. Andromeda similarly relies on users' understanding of horses as shorthand. This is a benefit for users who have a deep love of that species. A well-built animal simulator allows the human user to explore the concepts unique to that species the user can live out their fantasies with other like-minded users. There is a breeding element to the game and users can breed their horses within their account or with other users. The custom genes in gene probability mean that the offspring will have dynamic combinations of their parents' genes. Now that I've given a little bit of background on what the game is and how it's played, I want to talk about my feelings about this game. The essential elements of this game are pretty simple. You get a character, you explore, you level up. Once you know what you're doing and have a basic idea of how the pieces fit together, it's a straightforward game. It doesn't look like there are all too many levers to worry about. That being said, 
I experienced pain points trying to create a horse and ultimately wound up adopting younger horses until I realized it was a time of day or time of month reason that I couldn't create a horse when I initially desired to. After that realization, I was able to return and create a horse. There's a lot of reading necessary to understand the game. I find myself on the encyclopedia to understand basic concepts like, is a herd a faction? Once I did a little reading, the monthly holiday makes a lot of sense and is easy to interact with. It doesn't need to be that varied. I think there's a difference between being spoon-fed game features and using game design to market enjoyable features to make them more accessible to players. Mara Pets gamifies the introduction to its features with a leveling system. As the user accomplishes goals in their level, they're rewarded with prizes, insight currency, and the reward of having learned how to play Mara Pets. This incentivizes familiarity with many aspects of an open-ended game. I would consider the spoon-feeding game elements to simplify wayfinding. Flight Rising has the opportunity of hand-holding, but its game design also conveys the importance of features. For instance, the nesting grounds are where breeding takes place. Breeding is a core feature and a draw to Flight Rising. Appropriately, it's the second link on the sidebar and includes large buttons that gray after being used for the day. When you see this screen with the hatch button, you want to hatch that nest. This is marketing for a game feature. Indomita doesn't do either. To that point, I first joined Indomita in 2016. At the time, new accounts could only be registered between the first and the third of each month. When researching for this video, I tried to register a new account, but it appears to not have worked. So while the website doesn't say anything about the registration being closed, I think that a first to third registration window may still be active. While I'm an animal lover, I've never had a particular fondness of horses. Even for the small period of time that my family's farm kept them, they didn't appeal to me. Subsequently, I find myself researching very common terms like filly or colt to interpret character data. This is my biggest hurdle with browser-based horse games. The intimidation brought by the depth of horse culture. This is no different with Andromeda. How much am I assumed to know? For the record, I'm not saying that because I personally don't have an extensive equine concept vocabulary that the game should limit its terms. As I mentioned previously, immersion in the species vernacular and culture provides a rich tapestry for users wanting to roleplay as horses. My point here is that if the game sought to extend playability to people with less species-specific knowledge, terms like stallion or mare could be accompanied with the male or female sex symbol like on Flight Rising. The assumption that everyone has the same depth of knowledge isolates and could intimidate possible users. Both the Getting Started Guide and the Exhaustive Guide have the same formatting with a lack of hierarchy that foreshadows the way information is handled throughout the entire site. Without reading the guides, it's hard to wayfind and understand the site by browsing. The Getting Started Guide is on the left, the Exhaustive Guide is on the right. While there are part and section headers, there isn't an index to find what topic will be covered in which part. The general information doesn't cover action points or information about horses' moods, two elements that are present on the sidebar are on every page on Andromeda. The encyclopedia has sections and a glossary and is altogether better formatted than either of these guides presented to new users in their introductory email. That being said, information is still buried. A chapter like Breeding explains data information in paragraphs without subsection headers. Would you like to know which attributes can be inherited by offspring? You have to read through paragraphs until you get to one with a first sentence that doesn't even mention inheritance. Another example is the location page. It's great that the control panel of options is static on the right of the page. But is it true that the monthly holiday information is less important than a list of nearby herds and packs? I would argue that it deserves a more pervasive, visible spot that exerts its importance. When I look at this game, I'm reminded of Lyodin. The sidebar and top bar navigation just scream Lyodin. I am not keen on comparing these two too much because their gameplay is so wildly different, but I think Andromeda could benefit from looking at what Lyodin does and simplifying to mimic some of its strong suits. I started working on this video because in the back of my mind, there was a memory of strongly worded comments left on my last Andromeda video. 
I made that video in 2016 and remember being shocked by these comments saying I hadn't done enough to learn the game. At the time, I rode the subway to and from work and downloaded the exhaustive game guide to read on my commute. The memory of these comments stuck with me and got under my skin. Time and time again, I would think that there must have been something more to the gameplay that I wasn't seeing. When I sat down and decided to work on making this video, the first thing I did was watch my previous video. I had a hard time reconciling that my experience trying Indomita resulted in only that video. Because it's a 4 minute video, I checked my channel to see if I had actually made a second one covering my experience more exhaustively. Those shocked comments made a little bit more sense when compared to what the video covered versus what I thought the video covered based on my experience. Here's the most eye-opening part for me, and while it was both true and accurate, it did not reflect the entire situation of my experience. Because I like to believe that I learned best by doing, I skimmed the getting started guide and tried to figure out the game mechanics from the game. My first game session probably lasted under 10 minutes. I couldn't figure out what to do. The interface is really ambiguous. So then I signed off for like three weeks. I did eventually come back. I didn't want to be the person who tried once and gave up. From my digging since, I think I've gotten a basic understanding of the game elements. These things are true. I evaluate games on their design and functions and believe a user should be able to understand a game by working through it. The guides were overwhelming and did not have any formatting to make them easier to digest. So I did not read them in one setting. I did put three weeks of a break between starting and ending my trial. What I didn't cover is that when I did return to the game, I did read the guides. I dedicated time to referencing them and the parts of the site they corresponded to. Leaving this from the narrative was a generous choice that assumed the listener would correlate me claiming to digging on the site to digging in the references. This context makes those angry comments make a little bit more sense. I mean, not fully. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that. I spent 10 minutes on the game, it wasn't easy to play, so I gave up and came back later and spent cumulatively more than 10 minutes researching this game before making this video. I feel like I communicated that. After I realized this misinterpretation and miscommunication from that video, I once again shelved Indomita for a couple of weeks. Yes, I took two weeks off in the middle of this video research. I've cumulatively spent hours playing this game and reading the resources. I stand by all of my assessments from the previous video, including critique of the art. It's just not my slice of pie. The users are friendly and I've gotten forum support. I think my 2016 video had some pretty succinct descriptors of how I still feel about this game. My initial reaction to this game is that it's unnecessarily challenging. The burden of discovery and explanation is on the player because the interface design is so underdeveloped. I would really like to see the layout adjusted to differentiate modules and support explanation of how those features influence other parts of gameplay. And my plea from 2016 to players still stands. If you play regularly and want to set me straight on gameplay mechanics, please enlighten me. The most valuable bit of insight I could get is what a typical gameplay session looks like for a dedicated user. The game is in active development and I've had some small enjoyment getting to understand these features. I commend the staff on their dedication to this project. I even bought some in-game currency. I would like to breed a horse and that's a longer investment, so we'll just have to see if that happens. All of this said, I still don't recommend Indomita. I set out to make this video in order to challenge that recommendation. I wanted the commenters to be right and for me to be wrong, but that's not what I found. It was frustrating and humbling, and if you disagree, I hope my arguments explain how I got here. While I don't recommend this game, I did record quite a bit of my game sessions, so enjoy some of the greatest hits of Andromeda 2020. Okay, so we had a little bit of a breakthrough on Endometa just now. I've been watching these tutorials by Lisa Silver, and um, I was able to create a horse. I don't know if it was like a time of day thing where I was trying and it didn't go through, but I did the same thing as I did before, um, and now I have horse. And horse is named Chibi, and it's Arabian, I believe. I don't really know how this works, if it's an adult or what it is, because 
I've got other horses, and I don't know how to tell between their age. I think... Okay, I, okay, so compared to those guys, Chibi is about the same size. He's about the same size, but he's three years old. Okay, so he's three years old. Let's look at Rosie real quick, because I swear Rosie is, small, Rosie is smaller. And Rosie is zero years old, okay? And then if we switch to Kathy, which I haven't changed, I've kept all of the names. Kathy is two years old and will age on 424. Now, all that being said, we go back to Chibi, and Chibi is three years old, but will age on May 13th. What does that mean? I don't understand any of this. And, uh, did I make Chibi a girl? Uh, I think I made the guy, I think I made the horse a girl. Whoops, I meant to make a dude. But this will do, this will, I mean, I don't know anything, so this will work all the same. <laughs> Every day I do this, I learn a little bit more. So we're gonna have to, did I do my rollover yet? I gotta go to the loke and do this. There we go, there's the rollover. So the AP is all reset, everybody's got full action points, everybody's hungry, she hungry, okay. Um, to go to the location, we're gonna first of all nourish, so no longer malnourished. I like that. We're gonna play this. So I have no no idea how many. Okay, it has to be somewhere between ten and forty. So we're gonna try thirty-five. Oh my gosh, I won! Hey, all right. I feel like. I'm like starting to get things. I feel like, like I have no idea how, how important that is. Trivia, no, I'm not ready for that. Study, I don't have any ivy. Okay, Kathy was defeated. Okay, we're gonna go to explore. I wanna go to explore. Oh. Indomita. Give me what I need, Andromeda. Just nothing's loading. Nothing's loading. It's my goal to keep that whole health all the way up for these guys. Until I really understand how this game works, my number one goal is to keep them all alive. <laughs> I've made the decision that in order to say that I've really given Andromeda a chance, I need to breed a horse. I need to have a horse offspring happen. The problem with that is that I only have girl horses and you need a boy horse in order to do that. So I am going to adopt a boy horse. And the thing is, I don't really understand a whole lot about how these horse, like horses look or what, like what these, like what, is, what do these words mean? I don't know enough about this game. So I'm just gonna go with one. This one looks like it has some pretty good stats. Um, and more importantly, it's a colt, which I've learned means boy horse, boy baby horse. Well, a filly is a girl baby horse. I, anyways, so I'm going to go for uh, this one right here. I'm pressing the adopt button. I have no idea what it looks like. Huh? Huh? Does that mean that I got it? We're gonna just uh, go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go look at. Ooh, ooh, look at that! What a little look with his little little hair. Can I reset the images? He's not really loading there. There he is. Okay. And is there a way to see what he's gonna look like as an adult? So the character ID number. You are seeing me learn how to play this game live. I okay. So he's gonna age up on June third. <sighs> Is there any way to make them age faster? Oh hey. So okay. By that's one by one year, which is thirty days. So I have to buy chrysos in order for that, and that costs five chrysos. 
and it's 10 chrysos for five dollars all right i'll figure it out i'll decide what i'm gonna do there all right thanks for joining me on this beautiful and very exciting journey on indomita i got a request on indomita uh hannaful would like to breed with kaffee dude i am so excited i've not done anything like this let's just approve wait a minute did it do it yeah oh no it was not successful oh no dude i'm sorry let's let's do it let's yeah let's request that one more time let's do it again hannaful oh Dude, I wonder why. Oh, I'm so excited, but it didn't happen. People of the internet, even if you've never heard of me before, we have a united enemy, and that united enemy is horse girls. And they've gone too far every time they've gone anywhere, but especially on the internet and in the realm of Neopets-like games. For more game insight and critique, take your virtual pet-loving hands and click on that subscribe button. Thanks. Bye.